first panelist to the floor. Y'all give it up, make some noise for Young M.A. <laughs> Second panelist. <laughs> this dude is no stranger to this world, getting a lot of money in gaming. I'm really envious of this man. Make some noise for T. Grizzly. <laughs> this lady right here is doing wonderful things in the culture. Uh, representing South Florida. Y'all make some noise for Miss Basketball. <laughs> hey, y'all. Let's welcome the veteran to the stage. Man, the man, the myth, the legend right here. Lupe Fiasco, ladies and gentlemen. Salute, brother. Peace, peace. How y'all doing? Um, we was talking about entrepreneurship, and I just want to speak on how important that is to you, specifically, Young and May. Um, it's definitely important, you know what I mean? Definitely growing up in uh, like a tough neighborhood as Brooklyn, New York. You know what I mean? You come Shout from to a Brooklyn. Lot. You already know. Come from a lot, you see a lot, you understand? Um, and I was also taught a lot from my mother. You know what I mean? I always seen her in that aspect of just raising her kids and stuff like that. So, um, you know what I mean? Just being who I am and what I represent, like it's definitely important for me because it's something I hold, you know what I mean? Hold on to or whatever the case and something I gotta be in front position of. So, um, yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta tap into anything, anything that's, you know what I mean? Get into a bag that's gonna stamp your grounds, you know what I mean? I just wanted to touch on that because <laughs> gaming has become a billion dollar industry and there wasn't always people that looked like us in those spaces. Speaking of which, T Grizzly has completely capitalized and taken full advantage of this movement. And um, <laughs> T Grizzly is, a, is the topic of discussion when it comes to modifying gaming PCs, <laughs> when it comes to GTA. Uh, I watch a lot of your clips, very, very uh, adult friendly content on there. But uh, talk about the, the business of gaming for, for T Grizzly and how that's changed what you do because you're an artist first. Yeah, for sure. So as far as the business aspect of it, it's something that just happened. It's not even nothing I tried to do. Like I always like games, you know what I'm saying? So it started off me just doing it for fun. It's probably why it's so organic and why a lot of people like it because it's just me on there around being myself, you know what I'm saying? So, but when you get down to the business of it, it's a lot of stuff you got to put in place. Like you need a team. You can't just be on there playing the game and think it's going to work. You need a team of people and you got to capitalize off all the different things you can monetize off of, you know? Speaking of that, you talking about having a team. Is there, you want to expound on that? Because I think that's something that nobody talks about as far as having a, a behind the scenes team. Yeah, especially for us, we do music. So we can't do every single thing. So I need this person to run a YouTube. I need this person to be in my, in my Twitch channel. I need this person to, these people to be admin in the city. You know what I'm saying? You just need these different people because you can't do everything. For sure. Miss Basketball. We are so. Uh, <laughs> you gotta do that every single time. I will. Okay. Uh, black gamers, we only make up a little over 3% of the gaming industry, whereas white gamers make up 78%. Hispanic Latino make up about 9%. 4% is unknown. You being a woman, I think that demographic trickles down a lot more. Being a black woman in, in the culture and the space, can you speak to some of the adversities to other black... Are there any black women in the building? We got a lot of beautiful black women in the building. Can you speak to some of the challenges and adversities to overcome in, in breaking down barriers in different spaces? I think for me, the biggest challenge is representation. Um, one of the reasons why I'm in gaming is because I didn't see a lot of people that look like me. I was the first African-American female to be a sportscaster for the HBCU Say that again, say that again. <laughs> the first. African-American female to be a sportscaster for the HBCU Sports League. Um, and I got in this whole entire league in, in, in the gaming industry because of my love for sports and entertainment. And those two kind of merged together. But when I got inside this, this league and saw the things in the esports, I saw there was one other black girl, and especially with me working with the NBA 2K League now, um, another girl by the name of Autumn Johnson. It was just us two, just two black girls in a whole entire league that is doing broadcasting. So for us, it's just making sure that we have representation. That has been the biggest struggle for me. Other than that, um, I haven't had that many other like crazy challenges because I, I mean, I live in a bubble. So everywhere I go, I kind of just attract people and I make them believe in me. I make them want to work with me. I make companies see me um, and add value to that. So I haven't had any major struggles, just representation, letting people know that we deserve to be seen. We deserve to be in those spaces. Salute. The first black woman. 
Shout out to black women, just yeah, for the record. Shout out to black women. My mom's a black woman. Uh, <laughs> Lupe, listen, bro, you, you, people, whether people want to admit it or not, bro, you a legend. And that's just DJ Head speaking to you. I just want to tell you that, you know what I'm saying? But um, I want you to talk about the relationship between music and gaming, because I feel like <laughs> a lot of these games wouldn't be the same without the soundtrack to go with it. And a lot of y'all songs, I know MA will talk about that too, you being on playlists and also UT, but as far as like... Everybody was but, like, ooh. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I just want, to, want you to speak to the, the business behind uh, getting these musics, what we call them syncs in the business. I'm not sure if everybody is familiar with that, but I know you're no, no stranger to that. Yeah, one of my first big records was a record called Tilted, which, is in, which was on like a, a need for speed back in like the early 2000s. And so I'll see fans, and I'll, they'll be like, kick push, like nah, nah. So we sound like nah, nah. Need for Speed, though, and I was like, oh, okay, I remember that. Um, but that was early in my career, and it was like, I didn't really understand how sync, I didn't have to, because I didn't. Have, we had a licensing department at, at Atlantic. Um, and so they just did that on our behalf. That's just them looking at how many revenue streams are available to this music, and gaming kind of being one of them. Um, other than that, I mean, through, through my career, I've done a lot of stuff with games directly, kind of indirectly, around them. I did the theme song for Evo um, a few years back, which is the, the world's biggest um, fighting game competition, so I did a joint for them. But it was very like organic. It was like I knew the guys who run it, they were cool, I love the game, love Street Fighter, cool, I'm gonna make a song for it, and then we go, right? But I didn't get necessarily paid like crazy like that. It was just for, talk the, that talk. It was just for the moment, right? Not saying that you shouldn't get paid, but there's also something to, be, to, to just do something because you love it. Like do something because you love the culture and you, you're, you're in that position to execute it in the, like the illest way. So if you, look at, like, if you look at skateboarding as a game, right? It's like, oh, I'm gonna do kick push, right? Which wasn't even for me, right? It's like, these are for these skaters, right? But then it turns into something else, you know? So, and even like one of my latest records that I just dropped is called Channel Number Three, which is all about, I did like a little AI generated video but it's all little black boys playing video games, right? Playing retro games for the same reason. Like I wanted to do something where it was like, I want black faces, you know, to be seen playing these games and, and having a, a point of view and a perspective and an activity and participation. Um, so for me as an artist on the music side, sometimes it's a business decision, right? And maybe, maybe it's a long-term business decision where it's in the short term, I'm just do something cause it's dope and I got the opportunity to do it. And we figure out what the business is later and in some cases, it's like, you know, I, a gaming company comes to me, wants me to rec make a record for them on scrap, so. I mean, Kick Push is obviously a cultural classic. Like, it's something that, and me being, I used to skateboard in high school, and I was like the only black face. It was me and one other black dude who skateboarded, but we played a lot of Tony Hawk, you know, uh, pro skater on, on the consoles, and you didn't, it was all rock music. And hip hop didn't start getting introduced into it until like, you know, Terry Kennedy started to blow up and these different skaters and stuff like that. Did you, did you ever find that in those spaces that you were not ostracized, but not included in the same way? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I stay, I'm ostracizing hip hop. Um, <laughs> That's another conversation. <laughs> I, I think it's, it, it's a challenge though. I think hip hop's not there in certain spaces because people don't make the choice to put it there. But if you did it, it would be there. You know, so like you can't stop it. And, and especially if it's good, you know, like if it's really good, the record's really good, whatever the, the, the content is really good. Like that should be a song about chess. You know, where's the rap song about chess, right? Where's the, where's the rap song about Mancala? Where's the rap song about, you know, like I think sometimes we get funneled into just, you know, digital properties or just the standard kind of gaming, what we think of, and we let kind of all this other stuff fly past. And you think like, yeah, maybe there is a chess record that somebody needs to do, right? That will activate FIDE and these other kind of chess organizations, which are some, in addition to that, the gaming industry is like a billion dollar thing. Facts. You know, they make movies about it, Netflix specials about it, you know, these big kind of blockbuster pieces. Where's the rap song for that? You know, like who's going to make that? You know, I'm going to make it, but like who else is potentially going to make it? <laughs> Um, I'm glad you said that because Young M.A. has been featured on a lot of different 
playlists and stuff like that. And shout out to 2K, shout out to Madden, everybody get those playlists every year. Um, I remember seeing one of your placements, like, I think it was like a few years ago, maybe like 2019, was it? Something like that. And I remember seeing, I was like, okay, they got MA on here. And I just thought it was dope because, well, I, I don't want to go into a tangent, but my question to you would be, do you, when you, when you approach video games and creating music, like Lupe was talking about, do you create original songs for the game or do they approach you for songs you already have? Or how does that work? Uh, they do approach me for the songs I already have. Uh, the crazy thing is I'm not even knowing that it's gonna actually fit the game. You see what I'm saying? So like nine times out of 10, I'll be kind of surprised that they even come to me and my team about it. And then it's like now when the song is on there, you start to hear why they, you know what I mean? It's like they have a different ear sometimes for your music. So that's another thing when it comes to, I guess, gaming and hip hop, is like people probably don't think to make songs for gaming because when your ear is stuck on hip hop, you, automa you automatically think of that audience for hip hop. You don't think about a gaming audience. You understand what I'm saying? When you're making the music, when you're creating the music. So I think that's just basically giving a different perspective and a person's ear on something that we might not hear as artists, but the people in the, uh, the gaming company might hear. And then now it's like, okay, it becomes a thing. That's dope. I, and salute to you for those playlists because I feel yeah. like uh, a lot of it's like women are usually underrepresented on those playlists, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I've been know. on like three of them too. Facts. Just to throw that out there. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Talk that talk. Shout out to Wild too, one of my artists in here. He just was on 2K um, 2024 with me this year. So, Word. Yeah, yeah. Do you get out? You play 2K? Yeah, I used to, but I, I ain't gonna lie. I've been, I've been on the, um, I've been on the GTA joint. <laughs> Yeah, I've okay. been on that tip. I was I was always like more of a uh, shoot 'em up type, you know, gameplay like the the sports and stuff. You know what I mean? It's cool for the moment, but yeah, I'm more like grand GTA type vibes. Okay, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's my vibe. Uh, T, like you, to me, you you're one of the pioneers when it comes to the gaming revolution and cross pollination with hip hop. I, I look at you as like I look at you as like that. I'm pretty sure everybody does. But where'd you get your start when it comes to that? Because um, you know, a lot of us grew up on whether it be Tony Hawk, whether it be Madden, some people, if you go back, MTV Music Generator, like it was different things that was got and people were making beats. Shout to Hit Boy, my brother Hit Boy, he was making beats on the PlayStation. So where'd you get your introduction to it for to the gaming aspect? So it all started like when I was like a real kid, like, you know what I'm saying? My grandma won't run watching TV. And I see commercials of the new Call of Duty or the new Grand Theft Auto. I had an uncle. He was a little older than me, so he used to be getting money. And I used to text him, like, or not text, but call him off the house phone. Hey, this game about to come out. I need it. And my uncle, that was like my big brother. You know what I'm saying? And he like, all right, bet you get some good grades. I got you. You know what I'm saying? He always bring the new games, and it all started from there for real. Did you did you notice a difference in the game? Like. I don't want to say from a from a platform standpoint, but when hip hop started to really get infused in it, did you take more interest in it? No, I never really connected the two. Okay. Because when I play games, it really be like my escape from hip hop, from, from the music, from e anything. Yeah. Got you. From everything, when I play games, it be an escape for me. I ain't thinking about nothing. I just only care about what's going on in the game. You feel me? I feel that you check out. Yeah. Miss um, basketball, like. You, you agree with him? Is that, is that what I got from Of course, a lot of individuals play video games to escape from their realities and from their worlds. So I, I totally agree with what he's saying. Do you think that from, from okay, for, well, first of all, what's your game? Like, how did you, I want to know what you was playing growing up. Ooh, I was playing Duck Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing Duck Hunts. I was playing Tetris, Pac-Man. I was playing more arcade games than anything because I was outside actually playing. So the times that I did play, I'd go to the arcade and play. Um, but the way that I got into gaming is my love, again, for basketball. And um, Ryan Johnson, shout out to Ryan Johnson, part of Community. Uh, he reached out to me. He was like, yo, you love basketball. You, you know how to host. You're in entertainment. You're a radio personality. I need you to be a host for the HBCU Sports League, and that's how I got into it. And now that I'm in it, I've learned how to play 2K, I talk my trash, um, playing mad a little bit, um, Apex Legend, a little Call of Duty here and there. Um, but I've, I've been blessed, and now I'm like, yo, I have to start being an advocate for everybody else, those little kids that have been playing since they were six, the little kids that have been playing, that trying to you know, escape from the world. I wanna be an advocate for them to show them that, hey, there's people that look like us in this space that are really winning at this, and you can do it too. Salute. That's dope. That's, clap it up for that. 
Um, Lupe, you spoke on, when we were talking earlier, you spoke on uh, working with companies and, you know, doing deals with these brands and stuff like that. I think E-League is something that has completely revolutionized the business as well, both in hip hop and in gaming as well. And from your, from your perspective, what are your thoughts on E-Leagues being included in different competitions, different things like that from, from a worldwide standpoint, just like sports? What do I think about that? I've been to one. Actually, no, I've been to two, right? They play our music, but nobody looks like us. Got it. So you mean like the like like uh, StarCraft and like those like PC Counter Strike. Counter Strike. Yeah, there's like there's uh there's there's also uh sock. I mean FIFA. There's also right, right, Madden. Right. I mean, I, it, it's something culturally about it. You know, I don't I don't think it's uh, a uh, uh, too much of a a mistake that T plays GTA. You know, I think it represents something. You know that he sees in that young and may same way, right? Same, even for me. Me too. You know? yeah. um, I think we play what we see, kind of a thing. Um, I think there's like a cultural nerdiness thing to it that that happens. Like I, I, there are kids who play it. You yeah. know, do they play to the level that they can compete on those teams? Is a whole nother thing. Got right? you. When you think of like certain, like Korea, for example, right? Like Korea has like institutes and schools to play those games you know is, is there show me the nba 2k academy you know <laughs> in harlem right you know um so i think it's like it, the investment from the community to be like yo we want to build there's a ton of basketball courts right but like where's that esports house where you can go in there and learn how to play starcraft and you know et cetera, et cetera. so i think it's an infrastructure thing okay. kind of investment that needs to happen I feel like and that. if we don't see the value in that you don't see the value in it, you know? And you really gotta be honest, like what is the value overall in those big, con is, is it better to put that into a mental health facility versus building, you know, so we have other issues that we kinda gotta deal with as a people before we think about that too. Um, but I think it's a vibe, and I think there are some kids that, that get there, like some of the top players in the world, at least on the fighting game side, are black, you know? Um, and other, pieces and pockets too, right? From different cultures. It's not just a bunch of white folks, you know, a bunch of Asian kids, right? Um, so got to get them that credit too. But I think it's an investment thing. I think it's like infrastructure investment. Are we going to build that to compete at that level to get those deals and, and be on those stages? Go ahead. I just want to say the infrastructure is there. I am an esports professor at Morris Brown College here in Atlanta. It is the HBCU. Um, and we have been building a whole entire esports degree to where now kids that were playing these video games at six, seven, eight, 10, 12, can now get in this space and be great and get a degree in it, whether they're playing professionally or they wanna be behind the scenes. What it is now, we just have to have more awareness for the most part, because a lot of us don't know it's even out there. A lot of us didn't even know you can get a degree in esports. A lot of us don't even know that you can actually be a competitive professional player in esports and make millions of dollars. Black people, and there are some people that are doing it now. You have the NBA 2K League that I am the host of the AT&T 5G Game Day Show. There are black people, and I know it's surprising because if you're not in that space, you don't see it, but there are a lot of black people in this space that are killing it. The problem is we don't have eyes on us. We need more awareness, we need more media attention, we need people to be more advocates to say, okay, you know what? What is that going on? Let me figure out what it is and let me come and see what it's about and then spread the word. Because there are a lot of kids who are changing their lives, their family lives by playing and competing in esports. So the infrastructure is there. We just have to continue to build it and spread the awareness to let kids know, hey, if you love playing video games, why not make it a career? I think it's also, like Lupe said, it's just... There's other things going on and there's a lack of knowledge as far as like awareness of what you just brought to it, which is dope. But I also think that from a, from a standpoint of culture, we look at things as different as being, oh, that's weird, or you a nerd, because I, I was even called that as far as being into that type of stuff. Yeah, that was back in the day. It's not that anymore. You got some really cool, fly people <laughs> that are in the eSports. I'll take myself Yeah, I was about to say that. That's, that's I mean, more like back in the yeah, day. Yeah, that, the not, times not, have not, changed. Yeah. Like the times have changed, you have people who look like us in that space. The problem is we just have to have more awareness. And these people are hip, they're cool, they're not like the average gamer. When you, when you think about, if you close your eyes, you think about a gamer right now, you're gonna be like, yeah, probably a white kid with the skater cut, 
with some baggy pants on. <laughs> now it's not that anymore. It's, it's gamers that look like me, literally look like pretty nails, weave, lashes, everything that looks like me. There's athletes, there's hip hop entertainers that are playing in these esports competitions that are killing it. We just have to have the awareness, but they're, they're people that look like us. They're not like the skater cops anymore. No, I was about to say, I ain't gonna lie, I'm a little guilty because <laughs> when I'm playing the game, sometimes I'll be like, yo, he really a gamer though. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, you a gamer. Oh, like, I'm, I'm like, I'm not a gamer, but you're really a gamer. You know what I mean? We do do that. I ain't even gonna lie. But that's a thing. That's a, that's the issue right there. Yeah, that's, that's one of issue. the issues. I think from a, like an awareness point, um, the last episode of the shot that I seen, like the, 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 the plot twist was yeah. the, the, the kid wanted to go to California to be a gamer. You know, so I think there is like some cultural flashes like in the mainstream that are like, yeah, that might be a career, that might be a thing. So, but yeah, that's dope. It will, I will, it would be dope to have like a list of like where are all the degrees in esports, like where are all of the things. Just so one thing to have awareness, but like where do we go to to figure that out? Like where are those spaces and where are those that'd spots. Be, that'd yeah. be really good. We have a bunch of we have the HBCU Esports League. There's a bunch of different resources that you guys can tap into, especially the NBA 2K League. They're doing tryouts. There's just so many different. You things. got a website you can share? Or? Yeah, go to NBA2K.com. <laughs> go to HBCUEsportsLeague.com. Okay. You just have to type it in. And the problem is for us, we just don't go looking for the information. If we don't see it, then we're not gonna go looking for it. It's just like, all right, whatever, it is what it is. But if we go and look for the information, the information is there. The infrastructure is there. There are amazing companies who are putting together amazing things for black and brown people to excel and to be great at it. We just have to find the information. But it's out there and people are making a killing, especially if you're a content creator, for all the ones that do game, and let's just say you're not an amazing gamer like me. If you're a content creator or an influencer, there's a space for you to go out there and be great. Get paid being yourself and being great. You just gotta find the information. Salute. I agree with that. For sure. I agree with that. People buy more into who you is than what game you playing or how good you is at it. Like if you were entertaining streamer but you ain't too good at the game, people would come on there just to watch you. You feel me? And I feel like the stuff that you're doing is really helping to impact how it's impacting our culture because it's still super new to us. It, in the last three or four years, I just found out what streaming even was. I still got people ask me like, now how I get a PC? <laughs> or like the GCA you play, I can't play it on the P5 or the Xbox, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of us still don't even know what it is. Knowing the difference between the two and stuff like that, yeah. You feel me? So it's, it's, it's still very new to our culture. I feel that. Um, I used to play a game called Def Jam Vendetta. And to me, that was just everything. Even though the, the West Coast was a little underrepresented. Uh, that fight for New York was that one. Though. That was the one, man. And I'm from L.A., so we didn't get a lot of, you know, I got Warren G on there, but that's all we had. Y'all had everybody. That's it. Young, yeah, everybody. Hey, young and made, y'all had everybody. But um, did you, you play that? Okay, okay. Um, shout out to Nicki Minaj, who I know is somebody that, that you know, you've talked about in the past. She just became the first female uh, operator, named operator in Call of Duty. Salute to the women breaking down barriers in that space as well. Um, did, so when you, when, when I want to go back though, you say you did play the Dev Jam game. Yeah, I definitely played that. Okay. Yeah. One, were you, were you using the person who you were a fan of musically or it was just about the game? Because cause to, to T's point, I think that right. who you're a fan of musically also impacts your choices in and that it, space. Yeah, definitely, uh, you know, going into it, you do kind of look through the characters on who you want to pick and, you know, your favorite. But once you know the game and you knowing who play the best, yeah, then, then it becomes like, I, you know, I rock with you, but he played better, so I'm going to pick him. You know what I mean? Because now it's competition, even about my favorite artists on the game. You know what I mean? But overall, like, that was, that alone set a lot of, um, a lot of opening for hip hop into Facts. the game world. Like that really did it to me, honestly. That one. That was a big impact in, in the hip hop game with in the game with gaming. Yeah, my favorite artist couldn't fight on there. You feel me? Who was yours? <laughs> Who was yours? Wait, who's Who are you? I used Snoop. You remember Snoop was Snoop. Yeah, I remember oh, Snoop. West Coast. Yeah. Snoop was hard. And Snoop had a gun on there. So I'm like, yeah, I like Snoop. I like Snoop. <laughs> okay. There's that. <laughs> I think it was Red Man and Method Man that was like the nah, best. Nah, Fat there. Joe was giving problems. Oh, uh, Fat David Joe. David Banner was play. going crazy Fat there. Joe was giving real issues on that guy. Yeah, I used to hate Paul Fat Joe. Low key, I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't, I didn't play Fat Joe's music for a long time because of that. <laughs> on some real shit, I'm not even lying. This is not even on the script. 
I'm just, being, I'm just, I'm just being, I hated Fat Joe for a long time. Miss uh, <laughs> um, Basketball, you talked about as far as uh, people are being represented in different spaces like that. I feel like Nicki Minaj being included in Call of Duty is one of them milestones that people are not paying enough attention to. Do you want to exp talk about that? I think that's major. Me too. We have a black woman, a black female entertainer, a rapper that's in the forefront of From Call Queens. of Duty. Yes. Like, <laughs> it's, uh, it's amazing because not only are black people being represented, but women are being She got pink hair on the game. I mean, it's her voice. It's, her, it's everything. Like, she's leading the way. Like... This should be talked about everywhere. And it's been dope to see how she's just been involving, and especially now with Call of Duty. This is the first time they've ever done anything like that before. So it's just, it's major, major. My bad, you want to say something? Yeah, definitely shout out to Nikki, man. That's fire, you know what I mean? Just to have that impact in the game. Something very well needed. But I also want to say we ain't gonna forget about 50 Cent and Bulletproof, man. Facts. Come on, <laughs> yes. man. Oh, you're right. Yeah, we ain't gonna forget about that one. <laughs> um, yeah. Lupe, um, being somebody that's that's well versed in the, in the game, right? Um, were you were you somebody who played video games as an inspiration? I mean, I'm sorry. Were you somebody that created music while you played video games? Because I know like different artists would do different things in that creation process. Like T Grizzly said, you know, you use it to check out. Did you did you have the same experience, or did you ever draw inspiration? To rapper, to rapper. I just want to put out. First they of say, all, hey, don't don't I, front. I understand. Don't front like y'all wasn't on Parappa the Rapper. Parappa the Rapper was the first just to put that out there. Okay, I ain't taught you how to rap. If you was it you followed along. I mean, if you you know you mimicked the little thing here, you know, taught you how to tell a story, some battle rap in there. I mean, Parappa the Rapper was a joint. Go get Parappa the Rapper right, right now. <laughs> Right now on PS1, if you can find that one. <laughs> PS1, wow. Um, I grew up with video games, you know what I'm saying? Like, when my dad got out the military, he did martial arts in the military. He was in the military. When he got out, he started Army Surplus stores and karate schools. So in the Army Surplus stores, he would have, like, gumball machines and stuff, like, people to come in, Eminem machines. And then he would have arcade games, you know? So we had ghouls and goblins, like, kung fu, the whole joint. And then like the excess of the game, wherever he would get these cabinets in the 80s, he would, they would be in our basement. So I mean, we had Scrabble in the basement, Submarine, Asteroid, we had like arcade cabinets in the basement. Um, so I literally grew up with video games. So we had my first real video game experiences like Commodore 64 and I had Action Max, and Odyssey and all the Ataris, every, all the Nintendo, Genesis, Turbo Graphics, all that. And then when I saw- So you, you have money. No, 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 hit, Big hit, me, money. Hit, yeah. hit me out. I, I bought the last TurboGrafx-16 that Toys R Us had, right? Right before they discontinued it, so I was late in the game. When I started to get money, though, I went and got Neo Geo, C, the Sega C, all that. I got Big everything from, that I couldn't get, you know? Nintendo's, that's easy. Um, so I grew up with them, you know? So it's hard to separate myself like, when did my creative process start? Like, they've always been a part of that, either for an escape, for a challenge, uh, something technical, right? Because putting together a Commodore 64 is a whole thing. Um, and it's still in my work, you know? It still inspires me today. It's still, like, I picked Ken and Ryu when I played Street Fighter because that's how we did karate, you know? So I'm biased to kind of that, even though Zangi for E Honda might be something, a better choice. Um, but yeah, so it, it still inspires me to this day, literally. Like, literally, I'm still thinking like, oh, this video game reference from here, this, this thing from here, this thing from there. So it's still a part of it, yeah. I, I, I noticed that too in hip hop, like using video game references, it, it's kind of transcended, and I guess anybody could speak on this, it's transcended just the gaming world, also just hip hop. Because I see people who are not a part of the culture say things like, or they even buy the t-shirts, like I'm living life on all Madden or different things like that. Those are video game references that have become, I guess, pop culture, popular culture as, as to not be directly correlated to the video game, but everybody kind of understands the nuance of it. Um, in rap, I guess, for the artists that are up here, Video game references, is that something when, you, when you're when you in the creative process like Lupe was just talking about, is that something that you intentionally include or does it like, oh, I want to throw this in there or do you take it out or do you use it because it has a, it has a direct video game reference? Is that something that, that goes into the thought process of, of creating? 
I mean, I, I don't know. I, I never really thought about gaming at all when I wrote. When you, you write, know it. What I mean, I just yeah. wrote. I just write how I feel. Okay. You know what I mean? I can't really. Yeah, I can't really. Same thing. I thought about it before, but like I said, it's still very new. So some people ain't even gonna know what I'm talking about. So I stay away from it. Yeah. Oh, that's what. That's why I was what asking because some people remove it because you feel like, oh, people are not gonna get this reference. But Nikki, exactly. Nikki had a whole song called Chun Li. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So but I don't think yeah. that people knew that that was a Street Fighter. What? I didn't, I didn't no, know. No, bro. You didn't know that was you didn't know Street Fighter? I, 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 I thought that was her character. alter ego. I'm telling you, you know, people don't know. That's kind of her know. personality, so. I'm telling you, people don't know, which is why. Wow. I, real shit. That hurt my heart a little bit. It's a little, <laughs> a little, little, little digital tear right here. <laughs> Damn. You know, what I, you know what I love to see? Like the next, like it's new, right? For, and for some of it's real old, right? But I'll. Like I was thinking about this the other day, thinking in my classes at MIT, is like the kids that are really good, that are really, really good at games, they don't, they're not playing the game, so to speak. They're not playing that first layer. They're not going off the character because they like the character. It's, a, it's the next step that both of y'all say y'all took, right? Like you play the dude that you like, play the person you like, but then you realize this person ain't really calibrated to be competitive in the game. They just kind of there. And what I've noticed from being around a ton of pro players, they, they're playing like the frame data. Like they're, they're playing the mechanics of the game itself, the way the game was constructed. And even speed runners and different folks like that, streamers, like you watch them because they understand how to basically hack and break the game, right? And I think that level of, and when you talk to them, these, these dudes are super smart. You know, they're super duper smart. And like, yeah, they, they have fun with the characters and they'll do cosplay and do other stuff like that. But when they really start to get into it, and even my, my, my nephews and them, when they play GTA, they know how to hack the game, right? So they're playing it in a deeper way. So I would love to see like that part kind of be a little bit more on the front for, on the forefront as we, as a culture, kind of push through this gaming kind of space. It's like, what is the math that's happening behind it? What's the physics that's happening behind it? What's the engineering and things like that, software engineering? Um, to do that, because a lot of the people that I watch, because I watch a lot of streams, watch a lot of uh, uh, run-throughs and stuff like that, it's those dudes who know all of the ways to kind of hack this pod and, and jump through this wall and, and play like this and play like that. So I'd love to see a little bit more of, of that too in, in the process. For sure. Miss Basketball, you posted about your favorite, uh, your favorite team, the ATL Dream, right? The WNBA, yeah. The w, the Shout WNBA. out to my Atlanta Dream, yeah. Shout out to Atlanta. Um, the WNBA is a big component of NBA 2K. Finally! Um, NBA 2K is like the biggest, probably the biggest basketball game ever at this point. It's transcended everything. The WNBA being included, yeah, you could bring them up, it's fine. Just, or hand them, yeah, it's fine. Um, the WNBA being included on NBA 2K was a milestone for females, female athletics, right? Yes. Okay. In your opinion, does the WNBA, it's cool, I don't need The WNBA, do you think that the WNBA should have their own game? Or is it, or, or is it a win being included in the male game? That's a slippery slope to go down. Good Lord. You're going to put me I'm put sorry. Me on the spot. Um, for one, I think being included in the men's games is a huge step, a huge milestone um, to, be represent, to, be, to be represented in a game like NBA 2K. It's an honor. It's truly an honor. It's, it shows that we're making strides. Um, when we talk about having our own game, I think we have a little bit, a little ways to go. We just have to make sure we have the market for that. Um, but being included in the NBA 2K game, that's a huge milestone because now you have WNBA players who are being seen. And these are some of the best females in the entire world that are now included with the best men in the entire world that play the game of basketball. So having them included, that's what we really look at when we look at esports, when we look at different things that we play. We want to make sure that it's inclusive, that we add the women in that space. So them doing that, Major milestone. Super milestone. Give it up for the women. Um, Woo! Uh, T, you, you, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you've spoken about this publicly. You, you was on my boy's show, and you was talking about the money. You shouldn't have did that. <laughs> yeah, because everybody on you now. Hey, <laughs> you already know where I'm going. The money you making from, from gaming, streaming, stuff like that. Uh, at this point, is it kind of like an upside-down effect on the music? Is it more... I, I, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to get in your pockets, bro. I will take some pockets. gas money, but I'm not trying to get in your... But I do want to know, like, as far as 
from your standpoint, you know both ends of the, you know both businesses at this point. Yeah, for sure. Which one is mo- most lucrative? And then also, how do you make it more lucrative for the people that's listening or watching? So music is more lucrative because it's more compound. As the more music you make, the bigger your catalog get, the more, you know what I'm saying, royalties and stuff like that. And were they similar at, just like you can get paid from the same thing a bunch of different times for music, you can also do it with gaming. So music is still more, but gaming is more than what I thought it would ever be too though. You feel me? So like I said in the beginning, you need that team though because you're not just gonna go on there and just start getting money. You gotta really like hustle it. You feel me? Take your videos from here. What are our websites monetize videos that get views? Put them on all of them. You feel me? Just it's, all different types. And can you give some advice to people who are just starting their streams? If you just starting your streams, you gotta you gotta instantly go for the social media. That's gonna drive a lot of traffic to your streams. Just because you turn your stream on, everybody don't know that you're streaming. You probably thinking I don't get no viewers. People don't know that you're streaming. You know what I'm saying? So go to the social medias, go to the YouTubes, go to the Twitches and the Kicks, and try to drive as much traffic as you can to your platform. Go ahead. And you do a really good job of this, repurposing all of your content. Like yeah. every, and I, I watched them, I'm, I'm a huge fan, but I've watched the way that you monetize in the space of gaming. You repurpose your content like crazy. Like you'll take your, you take your stuff from Scream or you'll put it on YouTube, you put it on Twitch. Then you go to Instagram, hey, I just posted this. You gotta keep doing it. And the more that you do it, not only are you making money on Twitch, you're making money on YouTube. You're making money on Instagram. Now you got people coming to your stream. Like you just gotta be consistent with it. That's the main thing. If you're starting out, be consistent. You, it's not gonna happen overnight. Unless you're a big, a big, big artist, like if Beyonce wanted to just jump on a screen, she'd go crazy. Yeah. But we're all not Beyonce. So you just gotta be consistent with it. But and Beyonce be, started from somewhere. Yeah, you know she did. I mean? Beyonce wasn't Beyonce overnight. Yeah. But when it when it comes to gaming, you gotta you gotta just be you gotta be honestly consistent with it and authentic. I don't care what repurpose. nobody tell you, be authentic, yeah. Like you said, you gotta repurpose. That's like the key. Yeah. For sure. Repurpose. You wanna say something? I'm just gonna say, like she said, consistency. That's it. You just gotta keep it going. Um, something that that uh we we actually Lupe was speaking on earlier as far as like in reference to a T, like the GTA and stuff like that. I do wanna have a have I mean this is for everybody like whenever you want to jump in but the conversation about the correlation between violence and video games and stuff like that we love GTA I love it I love GTA it is and but I also feel like hip-hop got the same rap when hip-hop made it, it got into the world from being oh this is violent this is you know this is bad we shouldn't consume it but the the, the conversation is usually is hip-hop our reality or is are, are we are we rapping about what we see or are we glorifying it? So I wanna, um, for anybody that wanna speak on the correlation between violent video games, are, are we responsible for discerning the two? Are we responsible for teaching people the difference between reality and fantasy? If, you know, if, if T Grizzly get in the, in the video and he's got this type of element in that video, does that make him a bad person? Those types of things are always stigmatized on hip hop artists. So for anybody that wants to speak on it. That's true. Because they, they say a lot about the things that's said in hip-hop or seen as far as music videos, the things that's talked about um, influences the youth. You know what I mean? And then you have, like, video games that kind of persuades that same situation in video games. And it's like, why does hip-hop have to be the more impact than a video game? You know what I mean? They kind of put that negative vibe amongst hip-hop than they do gaming. Um, I don't know why. Because a lot of hip hop stuff isn't always what that person really went through. It's more so experience, and it's not always glorified. Like not everybody glorifies when they're speaking about a situation that that was negative in their life or whatever the case. It's not really glorified. It's more so expression. And same thing with gaming. When you go play the game, sometimes you're expressing yourself in gaming. You know what I'm saying? It's just a different way of doing it. I think a lot of people, especially people that's like from the streets already like this type of stuff and already want to do it anyway. So the game I play and what I show, I'm showing you the trenches. You like this anyway, all right, bet. 
come play this instead of being in the streets doing it. Facts. So it actually get a lot of people out the streets and they still have fun and staying out of trouble and making some money. You feel me? Do you want it? And that need to be glorified more. Facts. Like that, that's what we need. Yeah. Yes. The fact that you can take somebody out the street and just have them in a video game doing that. And I saw you talk about that in an interview. I think for the most part, it's storytelling. Some of hip hop is storytelling. And just like the video games, it's storytelling depending on what game you're playing. Um, and of course, for whatever reason, maybe we can blame the media or somebody, uh, but hip hop is always taking a bad rap as to the things that we, you know, we talk about or the things that we listen to, the things that, you know, these artists rap about when really sometimes it's their reality, but also it's sometimes them telling the story. And my mom always say, to whom much is given, much is required. We just have to be mindful of some of the things that we say. And not only if we're, st if we're telling the story or we're talking about our reality, we gotta make sure we're fixing it and, and giving it out in a, in a right way or being responsible enough to show people like, hey, that's what I used to do. Let me show you a different way, like what you're doing in your game. So I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, did you wanna talk about so, I kinda wanna pass. Okay, it's all uh, good. Cause I, it's, a, it's a mix of both. Okay, you know? it's all good. It's a mix of both, yeah. Um, go ahead. Last thing about that, for the, for what confused me when hip hop do get a bad rap, right? It'll be like, oh, you talk about killing people. I don't want my people listening to your music. But they'll go watch John Wick. Facts. Facts. Like, it's all entertainment. Just like music is entertainment, music, movies is entertaining. Well, I always get into the argument with people about, you know, the reality of both because they're like the same thing. I use the, uh, the Avengers, you know, as, a, as an example. Like, we go see the Avengers. They're not, like, hugging each other and shit like that. Killing, so, killing everybody. Right. <laughs> Blowing so, up everything. Right, right, right. But I just think it's just a depiction of our reality. So that's that's kind of where I'm coming from. But I also, to your point, um, during quarantine, I spent a lot of time with my young homies playing games. They're going to spend hours on this game anyway. So if I could sit there with them and play video games, and these are all my little homies, rappers, whatever, street dudes, they're all on the game. And I'm like, well, if I can keep them here for four hours, without being in the streets, running in stores with hoodies on and stupid shit like that. Um, you know, I, and then I can actually give them game while they sitting there. I feel like I use, I feel like you use your platform for that as well. So um, I don't want to touch on that. My bad, did you? Oh, I thought you had something to say. Okay, um, last no, thing. I, I will say this about the, the One Piece though. Okay. Right? When you, take, when you take something like John Wick, right? John Wick is designed to sell guns. Like, that's what that movie is for, right? It's like, so how many people leave that movie and be like, oh, I want that pistol that he had, and then they'll go get it, right? So they may not use the pistol for anything violent, but sometimes the end goal of some of these things that we use and play or watch, the person that, the, the companies that benefit from it the most are companies that we'll never think about, right? It's like, well, John Wick is a great, military movie is a great way to get people to join the military. Right? And you can act all that shit out. You can get a saw and some fully shit and go crazy. Right? But that's still a business. You know, that's still somebody profiting from that. So I, I think sometimes it may not be violence directly. Like, yo, you watch this and you go kill somebody. But you'll definitely be like, oh, I want that Desert Eagle, right, that they had in the jaw. And you go get it. Right? Legally, too. It's not even like it's a crime. Right? It's just that crime versus like just wanting like, objects that potentially could be used to commit a crime or something like that are two different things, but I don't see it really as a problem, right? As a gun owner and, you know, collecting and all that. It's like, yeah, if I see that little thing that they had, like, for instance, one example, I, 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 in, um, in Chicago, went, went to the gun store, um, the way the guy sold me the gun, like, no bullshit, he was like, yo, you remember Die Hard? This was the gun of Hans Gruber. And I was like, I was like, oh shit, let me get that. <laughs> you know, so now I got the, the die hard gun kind of a thing. So I think it's, it's, it's some of that in, at play too. But I think to your point, like the games like GTA, Call of Duty, like I, I didn't know about none of these. So I guess it's a duality because I'm also educating myself on guns in, at the same time as I'm using them in the game. Cause I didn't know like how this gun worked versus this gun. And that way, like I'm not as curious to go out and really with it in real life, I guess, is a way to look at it. But I'm sorry, you want to say something? No, I'm just laughing because I'm you not. Some people are. I feel that. I feel and that. like my homies, like they're 
committing crimes playing GTA. Like, they're hacking the joint. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Like, to get the money, the whole shit. Like, how much money you got? Like, I had $30 billion? How do you do that? <laughs> it's like, oh, you got to hack the shit. It's like, how? And then, anyway, no comment. <laughs> yeah, we, no comment. Uh, <laughs> um, last thing, the future of hip-hop and gaming. That's what this panel is about. Where do you see the future of, of the intersection of hip-hop, gaming, uh, either together or separately, Young and May? Where do you see the, the future of it going, the infusion of it? I see, I, me personally, I see like the advent of like Apple is creating these new you know, augmented reality, things like that. I think that you'll be able to perform somewhere and people will be able to tap in wherever they are virtually and also gamifying it like what Travis Scott did with Fortnite, that which was crazy and huge. But where do you see the future of that for either yourself or the business? Uh, I definitely see it, you know, uh, expanding later on in the future because one thing about hip hop, hip hop finds its place everywhere, like even in movies. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so I can see that expanding in the future, but uh, hip hop is always gonna have its own elevation. It's never gonna be where it's too joint. You know what I mean? You're still gonna know the separateness of, of, of each um, industry, but I can see it, you know, kind of elevating from this time right now and um, just making its way, you know what I mean? Throughout certain games and stuff like that. Just for example, now we got T Grizzly with the GTA thing now. I'm also doing the GTA thing now. We got Nicki Minaj with Call of Duty. So you see it's, it's getting somewhere. So I can see it getting bigger, of course, like that. But yeah, that's hip hop, though. Go ahead. I think every every artist was probably a gamer before they became an artist. You know what I'm saying? So I think when we approach it, it's like, all right, bet we want to have fun and play the game. But who we are not today, it just emphasize it put an emphasis on it and bring more of a community to it because all our supporters is coming to support us being gamers at the same time. So I just feel like it can only grow. I think that it's gonna to continue to evolve. Um, when you think of hip hop and the entertainment world and esports and um, all the things when it, when it comes to gaming, I mean, it only is gonna to merge together. I honestly think so because you got a hip hop artist who are, like you said, were gamers before, and now there's another way for them to connect with their fans. Like we talked That's about, where I see it, yeah. yeah, like you talked about with Travis Scott, being able to perform a whole concert during the pandemic in Fortnite that had over 60 billion views. Like that's dope. You don't really see that reach, right? So I think as we continue to grow in this space and it's still very new, you'll see more artists, more hip hop artists that are gonna start to, you know, have more playlists. There's gonna be characters, right? There's gonna be creating their own video games. It's gonna be uh, really big and it's just gonna continue to grow. And then you're gonna have more artists that's gonna be discovered. Like you have a lot of underground artists that are on NBA 2K League soundtracks. Yep. Shout out to HB De uh, Ben Dope. He got a whole soundtrack on NBA 2K League and it's fire, yeah. right? And we don't know about these artists until they ever start playing these different games on these different soundtracks, these different playlists, and now we're discovering new artists. So as it continues to grow, it's gonna be really dope. I, um, I mean, everybody kind of said what it is to say. I just think like the layers behind that, like more, more interest in the game dev side, on the development side of it, um, more interest in kind of the mechanics of how these things actually work from a computational standpoint, from a mathematics standpoint, and then the ownership side. Right? And I think we, we're at a place now with artificial intelligence and machine learning where you can create your own game right now. Right? Um, so a lot more of that kind of piece and part. And you know, just have more fun. That's all. You know, that's it. Listen, I appreciate y'all for real. I've been looking forward to this for weeks. Shout out to Revolt World, shout out to Mountain Dew. Y'all make some noise for these panelists up here. <laughs> Make sure y'all tap into these streams and make sure y'all go get all of them pack, that, that dev pack and learn something, all right? And then tap in with Miss Basketball if you're interested too. Thank you. Yeah, pull up on me if y'all have any questions about esports, so.